Hey guys, today we're talking about rotoscoping. This is something a couple people have asked me about in the comments. So I've got a tutorial for you today. Rotoscoping is very time consuming, very labor intensive. I try to avoid it, but I am gonna show you how to do it. This is the shot we're gonna be working with today. We've got this hand where she's rubbing her fingers together and we're gonna make smoke come out. And then when she opens her palm, a little explosion of a fireball, a uh, little bit of a fun visual effect and let's just dive right into it. I'm gonna give you some pointers along the way. All right, guys, here we are in Apple Motion. My first step is just gonna to be to drop in our B-roll shot into our project pane. And I'm gonna make sure we're queued up to the beginning of our timeline. And I'm gonna look through the shot. I'm gonna scrub along and try to find where I need to start rotoscoping because I don't really need to do the entire timeline and I think this is gonna be the area here, starting where she rubs her fingers. So let's say two seconds in, and then after she opens her hand to 10 seconds. So we're gonna be doing eight seconds of rotoscoping. It's gonna take a minute. All right, so my first tip for you when you are doing rotoscoping is think about what you need to mask out of your frame so you can lay your effects underneath it. So in this particular case, I'm looking at her thumb and I'm looking at like the meaty part of her palm right here. That's all we need to worry about. Less is more in rotoscoping. Now, if you have a lot of complicated things that you're trying to mask out, I would do them in separate pieces. Don't try to do huge chunks at once. Do the bare minimum of what you have to. All right. So now that I've got my start point for where I want to start the rotoscoping, the masking off. The next thing we're going to do is head on over to the BZA tool. I'm just going to select it here and I'm going to start clicking an outline around her thumb and like I said around kind of this meaty part of her palm. Now if I just click I get linear keyframes but if I click and drag I get smooth keyframes. You see that how we get these little handles? Typically, I don't really work with these smooth keyframes because I, for me personally, I find that, you know, I don't get the precision I want when I start dragging and get getting the handles in the right directions. It gets a little messy. But in this case, because she's got so much curvature and I know eventually I'm gonna make all of these keyframes smooth, I'm gonna use the click and drag method. Okay, we wanna close up our BZA. Now let's head on over to the inspector and we're going to change this from outline to fill. And I'm gonna zoom in real tight here on my canvas. And let's head on over to that fill and turn down the opacity. So what I want is to be able to see the thumb under the BZA. And I'm gonna change the color of this from white just cause it's a little close to her skin tone. Let's like make it blue. This is just gonna work as a guide for us so we can see any pieces of her skin poking out. Now I'm gonna go in and fine tune my edit points and just make sure that we're starting out perfectly outlined with no skin peeking out and not going over the background. Okay, so now that we've perfected that first outline with our control points, we need to move forward frame by frame in our timeline and adjust these control points to move along with that thumb. This is the most laborious part of rotoscoping and it's definitely not something you wanna cut corners on if you want a really good result. So what we need to do now that we've, we're queued up on our first frame in our timeline, let's head on over to the inspector, hit shape, and we've got all of our control points here, 36 of them that I just created. We're gonna add a keyframe and then let's arrow over in our timeline one frame and let's move the next set. Now, once we move our first control point, you get a new keyframe. So you don't have to keep adding keyframes every time on this. And let me give you a pointer here. You don't wanna to try to cheat and skip frames in this process if you want a really precise result. And going back later and trying to add keyframes in between your broadly spaced keyframes just results in a very 
you know, sloppy look. So you just need to have the patience and do this frame by frame. It is very time consuming. You know, put on some tunes, put on a podcast and just get through it. Now our visual effects start with the smoke coming out of the top of her finger. So this is where I'm really gonna be super focused on being as precise as possible on this part of the clip. All right, next frame. Some more pointers here for you guys. You wanna make sure you start with enough control points. You can't go back and add control points later and have it not be messy. You guys, you wanna make sure you're adding a keyframe at every point in your video. So if your shot doesn't seem to move much between different frames, go ahead and manually add a keyframe at the control points in the inspector window. You wanna make sure you have keyframes at every single frame in your project. Here's another shortcut for you if you need to move big groups of control points, you can just hit the shift button as you click on the control points you wanna move as a group and then move them together. Guys, you'll notice here as I get to the very end of my clip, I'm not as concerned with the control points at the bottom or right edge of her hand. I'm really still looking at the top of that frame. Woo. Okay, that literally took me, I think, over an hour to do. I told you, rotoscoping is not for the faint of heart. Let me just take a second here that if you watch this video, you're learning something, you owe me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell, please. I deserve it after all that, I swear. I'm just gonna run my playhead over the timeline so you can see what we did. You see that blue shape is sort of matching that thumb in the places we really need it to match carefully. So now what do we do with this BZA we just made? We're actually gonna use it to create an image mask over a duplicate of the original clip. If you saw my video from last week with my 40 favorite motion features, you know I talked about image mask. If you haven't checked that out, I will link to it here. So what we're going to do is select our video clip here in the project pane. I'm gonna right click and hit duplicate. And then we're gonna head on up to object and add image mask. And then here in this little mask source field, we're gonna drop our BZA. Now I'm gonna turn off the original clip and we can see that thumb is really masked out. Perfect. All right, and the other step we need to take is to click back on our BZA, inspector. Let's go over to style and let's juice up the fill opacity that we dialed down earlier. So now we have that thumb at full opacity. That's a very important step. Now let's turn on our full screen video shot. And now let's add on our visual effects. We're gonna head on over to library. We're gonna go to particle emitters, smoke, and we're gonna grab this smoky variation and I'm gonna drag it in my project pane over my full screen clip and under my cutout thumb. And we wanna drag it in the timeline to the very beginning of our BZA. And I want to reposition it so it's coming out from under that thumb. When she's rubbing her fingers together, I want this smoky variation to end as she starts to pull her fingers apart. We're gonna add on a behavior to this. So basic motion, fade in and fade out. So it fades out at the end there. And now we're going to add our fireball. So again, we're back in the library, particle emitters. This time we're gonna go up to pyro. And we want this one here, this first one called big blast. And again, I'm going to drop it over my full screen video, but under my cutout video. And I'm gonna reposition it right there. What do you guys think of that? So I'm gonna make a few adjustments just to keep this a little cleaner. First of all, I'm gonna select Big Blast in my timeline. Let's head on over to Inspector, Properties. I'm just gonna dial down the opacity a little bit so it's not so saturated. 
And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my BZA in my project pane. I'm going to head on over to shape in my inspector window, and I'm going to dial up the feather just a hair on that BZA. And then I'm going to crank up the fall off over 100. And it just gives us a softer edge that I think is helpful. Alright guys, there you go. That is your rotoscoping tutorial. It's so labor intensive. I personally try to avoid rotoscoping whenever I can because you can see how much work it is, but doing it with patience and really keyframing every single frame is the key to success in rotoscoping. There's no cutting corners in rotoscoping if you want a good result. If you guys like this video, let me know. Give me that thumbs up. What else do you want to see a tutorial on? Because I read all of your comments and that's where I get my ideas. Thank you so much for creating with me today and I will see you again.